Hi, this is Sarah the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm going to be demonstrating how I stitch diagonally, stitch by stitch. And this is a method that I learned from Brian um, at Blitz Stitch, and he does some of his pieces, or most of his pieces this way. He stitches in a different direction than I do. I stitch from left to right. Um, in rows and I think he stitches in columns so he starts in a different corner than I do and you can refer to his videos to see which corner you should start in based on how you stitch. Um, I thought I would share how I do this because um, I think the way I stitch is how a lot of stitching instructions tell you how to stitch so I'm sure it's probably one of the more common methods. Um, <clears throat> so I started in the upper right hand corner and I'm stitching in diagonals and the goal of this is to have very neat stitches with no column lines. So the diagonals help you have no column lines and in order to have neat stitches you have, you come up, your goal is to come up in a hole that has one or zero threads in it and to go down in a hole that has two or three um, stitches in it already. And that helps your stitches look smoother. So in order to do that you have to stitch really one stitch at a time um, and kind of park along the way to help it go quicker. So for example, um, I don't know if you can see this very well, but this first line that I'll be doing has a whole bunch of one symbol and then three other unique symbols. I, I with solid color thread I stitch you know the first leg all the way down the line and then the next leg back and you can still do it do this method that way as long as they're all in a row together. Um, in this second row in the second row you can see there's the Z and then a bunch of other symbols and then Z again. Normally if I were stitching this in a different method I would you know slash 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 skip over do this one then cross it then come back and stitch these. This method I won't be doing that. This method I would be st I would stitch this one first because this is the closest one to what I've already stitched. Then I would park it over here stitch this one park it over here stitch these two then park it wherever it appears next down here then stitch this one and park it down here then go back here and stitch these ones and then come down here to stitch the next line. <clears throat> and um, if you didn't see that I'll probably cut it out but let's see. It's a little bit complicated to explain this because I don't know Brian does a really good job of explaining it so I think I might just do it and hope you can catch on and um, so here we go. What I'm going to do, the first symbol is here in the corner. I already have my thread parked here. The only downside to this method is you have to thread and re-thread your needle over and over again. Which is going to be hard to do with the camera right in front of me. Since I like to lick my thread. I'm going to do this one stitch. And this color does not appear again. Well, of course I pick one that's really rare. I kind of run run under a little bit because it's not it doesn't appear for a little while. I have a short string but this is 28 count so a short string can actually do several stitches. All right I think this is in the right spot. It's 
sometimes it is takes a little while to to figure out where to park it but this is the next instance of this color so i'm going to park it and undo my thread and mark it on my chart so when i get there it's clear that yes there is a thread in that spot and then i'm going to go to back up to the top here and pick out my next color which only has one symbol in this line I can see how this method would be a little bit easier um, on a frame if you don't have to be constantly putting your fabric down and back up in order to re-thread your needle. Um, so in that sense, stitching in hand is maybe a um, detriment to this method, but it's, it's workable and I've been enjoying it. So you could do it too if you'd like. So this stitch is a little bit closer. It's just right over here. So I'm going to park that and let go of that thread. And I have really enjoyed using a needle minder with this method. I have a little needle minder here because there's so much um, needle re-threading that I can, it's easy to, to not have to worry about um, tucking my needle into my fabric or poking it in and risking having it fall out and whatever. So this is nice having a needle minder on this. And this is in the very row underneath it. Nope, that's not the first instance. I want to park um, I want to park threads in the first in the instance of that color that's closest to what I've already stitched. Um, when my diagonals are right here, um, the one on the right will be the closest. and there's other symbols in between the two symbols of this color. So I don't want to choose the left symbol. I want to choose the right symbol because I'm stitching things from right to left so that the completed stitches are bumping up against as I stitch I'm kind of filling in from the completed area out to um, the part that's not done yet and I'm probably really butchering the explanation for this here this is the area where I have it looks like seven stitches in a row and I can go ahead and do all of those at once because each stitch will still follow the same criteria where there will be only zero or one stitches in the, in the holes I'm, I'm coming up in. So I'm going to do all my lengths, my first legs and then my second legs like I like to do. And this pattern is a nice one to do this method with because it does have a, a good amount of these larger chunks of colors. There's confetti along the edges of these um, black areas, but it's it's not too bad and I'm enjoying it. I don't have any pressure to finish this piece, so it's just an enjoyable process.
All right, I have more of this color right underneath here, but I do have another one over here in the corner and other stitches in between. So I'll do this one first because this is the one because I need to be able to have this one completed before I start these other ones. So I'm going to run my thread under to go down here because it's kind of a far distance. It's the same symbol right at the right at the first um, the first symbol of this next row, so I can go ahead and don't worry about rethreading my needle, which is nice. And then there's some other symbols next to it. So I will park this over here at the end of the diagonal, which is the beginning of the next chunk of that color. And now I'll, I'll work on these colors again that I had just parked here. The ends get a little bit raggedy, re-threading them over and over again. This one needs to be clipped. And I'm using a 28 needle too, so it's kind of hard to thread in general. And then threading with a camera in between me and the needle is making it <laughs> even more fun. All right. So the next instance of this is the same row, but there's another color in between it. So I'll go ahead and park it here and do these two of these color first. You may hear Frozen in the background. My daughter's watching that movie right now. Okay, then this color next appears down here. Um, I think right here. I remember to mark all these things. I sometimes forget to mark them and then it gets a little bit confusing. If it's on the same row, I don't bother um, marking the parked thread because I'm going to be there in like two seconds. So I know I just parked it there, but if it's in a subsequent row or anywhere else down the diagonal or in a farther over on the page, definitely, I definitely want to mark it. It helps to be able to count to new stitches and just to see where everything is and to know which colors are parked where. Sometimes I have forgotten to mark things or actually no, sometimes I've parked things and marked them but they're in, there's an, another color of, another symbol of that color sooner that I missed. So having th things marked, I know where I actually did park it and then I can go down and find it and then bring it back up to stitch that stitch that I forgot and then repark it in the other place, if that makes any sense. 
I feel like I'm not really <laughs> explaining this all that well, but it's kind of a tricky way to stitch, but it's kind of fun. I am only doing this on this one pattern. Well, maybe the, there's maybe one other one I'm doing this on. But it's kind of fun to, um, <clears throat> this is a pattern that's just for me. I have no, no pressure to finish it, um, so I can just kind of enjoy meticulously stitching it and seeing it unfold stitch by stitch. Because it does go a little bit slower than another method might because of all the thread changes. All right, and now the most fun of all. <clears throat> There's a whole line that's just this color, so I don't have to park, I can just keep stitching. <clears throat> All right, now the next instance of this color is the row below, but there are other colors here um, that I need to do first, so I'm going to have to park this one. And I'll go ahead and mark it. And at this point, I've done several rows um, on my pattern, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight those that are finished. I'm going to keep track of everything. I use a pen to mark my parked threads, a colored pen, 
and then highlight completed stitches. If you can see that. So now I'm going to start on the next row. I think I'll do maybe one more row for you and then sign off. This is a single stitch. And this color next appears down here. Several instances in this row, but the, the ones closest to the beginning of the row, which is on this end of the row, is right here. And there's two in a row down there. Now I'm going to move left and pick the next color. And this one has two stitches in a row of the same color. So again, I'm able to use the, um, do the fir two first legs and then go back and do the two because see, I'm coming up here in a, there's no stitches already right here. But when I'm going down, there's three stitches in, in this square. And then when I do my next leg, there's one stitch from the previous stitch in this leg, or in this hole. And then I go down and there's three. Come up where there's only one. Go down where there's two. The next time this color is the very beginning of the next row, which actually everything around it is finished, so I can go ahead and actually stitch this now. Don't re-thread my needle for that one. The one above it is done, the one next to it is done. So I can go ahead and do that one right now and then find it where it appears next, which is down here. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over. Right there, the beginning of that row. That's uh, a long string. Be sure to mark that. The next color, the next two colors only have one symbol each. That's the wrong one. Here we go. Comb some of these threads off to the side. They're getting a little hairy. And this color is right underneath here. Two rows down. It's easy to find. Oops, 
out of frame, sorry. This color is over here. It's about to go. Um, I'm about to run out of space. Okay, I cleaned off some space on my camera. Uh, apparently 36 minutes is as long as I can film. Um, and I probably will cut some things out of that one, but I wanted to finish up here and do a little bit more for you. Um, hopefully this is enjoyable at least, even if it's too confusing to follow. <laughs> Um, this is the next color in this row, and it's all one color, so I can go ahead and do a big chunk of it. And you might hear my daughter singing Let It Go in the other room. But that's the way it's going to be. And this is 28 count. Um, Rose Monaco that I'm working with one one strand over one it's nice and tiny so hopefully you can see it well enough and those small small holes aren't the best for demonstrating things but this is the stitch situation that I like for a lot of my full coverages now is 28 count either one over one full crosses or two over one half stitch. So that's what you're going to see most of the time. I still have a few other ones. I might do, I'll probably post this in the coming week. Um, I'm filming this on Tuesday the 9th and I just posted February 9th, uh, January 9th, just kidding, January 9th. I just posted my Year of Whips video yesterday. So I'll probably post this next Monday just to keep things consistent and it looks like I get to park this down here um yeah so if I do future stitch with me videos I might just choose whatever I'm working on at the time and just let you watch me um so that, because I, I do a variety of styles and so, um, of methods, I guess I should say, of stitching. And so it might be interesting just to see the different uh, methods that I use. Whether or not I talk, I don't know. Maybe you, if you have uh, opinions about whether or not you like me explaining what I'm doing, I think that's kind of my thing. I don't know what other Stitch With Me videos do. But I like to be somewhat informative. This is only one stitch right here. And this next occurs two stitches down. Well, it's got two stitches in between. So one, two, this one. Sometimes all the little park threads can get in the way and make it complicated, but that's the way it goes sometimes. When it gets dense, there's a lot of threads right here, so it, there's a lot of uh, confetti in this spot. So let's see. This is only one thread again. Each row um, I come to, I go back to the far right side of the row and see what color is there and how many stitches in that row are that color and then do those and then move to the next one to the left, then the next color, then the next color. Um, so that's basically how this method works in order to keep your stitches neat and precise. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for everything, although Brian likes it 
um, for most most everything. I think some of his full coverage pieces, um, or maybe when he's Autumn Magic, I think he he's a little bit less particular because otherwise it would just take too long. Um, and I know there's another piece I was working on that um, felt like it was taking too long, so I didn't continue this method. But if you're just there for the process, and it's a kind of a mixture of confetti and, and blocks, then this could be a fun method for you to try. I don't know about this string. It seems like, well, maybe there's a little bit. There's. A, it seems like it's getting weak. Where is it next? I might just... Here it is. It's between here. It's got six. Okay. I'll go ahead and park it again. There's again just a bunch of black here at the beginning of this line. So there's a nice mixture of single stitches and um, multiple stitches in each row. And sometimes you'll have two or three rows of lots of single stitches, but then it'll be followed by a few rows of blocks. So it kind of keeps it from getting too monotonous. Or too tedious, I guess is the right way. Too tedious. And on my pattern, <clears throat> again, how I mark it is I draw a pencil line along the diagonal to help me keep track of the diagonals. So I do pencil line for the diagonal, colored pen for the parked threads, and then a highlighter for finished stitching. That's how I mark things. There's actually nothing again of this color for a few rows, and then I have two solid rows of it, which will be fun. So that's down here. This happens again. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and do one more. My daughter's occupied. Let me let me highlight these so it kind of keep my my eyes where they should be. All right. So the first color along the right side here has two, and it's parked. So.
the next instance of this color is down here. So I'll park it there. And the next color in this row only has one and it's parked. If I come across one that has a color that's not parked, I'll just go find it, secure it in the back, and start working it. So, But most of these colors right now are... I've been using, so they're all available. So the next one is down here. Next one again, just one stitch. And let's see where that one's next. Not for a while, let's see. I just follow my, work my way down the diagonal trying to find it next because I pref, some people might park just directly this way as much as possible, but I like to see first if it's anywhere else in the diagonal because that's where I'm going to be next. And I don't want to have to go find a new thread if I don't have to. Um, so I'll keep looking down the diagonal until I can find one. So here's one down here. So there's not a whole lot to run things under back here. But um, I'll come on down here and park it down here. Because that's the next place that I see it occurs in this diagonal. And that's like um, 20 stitches away, but this is 28 count, so that's less than an inch that I'm carrying it, so it's really not that big of a deal. And my back is looking like this. Not not too bad. You can see some times where I have things running here and there, um, but that's what my back's looking like. Alright. And I marked that one, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is a double. There's two symbols of this color in a row. And then this color occurs again in this row, but there's one stitch of another color here in between. Right here. There's one stitch there, and then there's three more of this color. So I'll go out here to where those three start, the beginning of the diagonal, and then park it. And do this color first, and then come back to it. Man, 30 on camera is harder than it looks. Maybe it looks hard. Because <laughs> it sure is. Ah! 
All right, this color is it? Uh, there it is. So it's underneath this one. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. I think here. I will count in between other um, parked threads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To make sure a new parked thread is correct. And then now I'll go back to, oops, this color that I parked over here that had a few more of, of in this row. three in a row here at the end. Sun came out. It's been raining since yesterday morning. Sun finally came out. This color is down in this next row. I'm going to move these guys around so I can see what I'm doing. It's two over from this one. Okay, so that's where I'll park that one. And I think that's where I'll stop for now. Um, so I've got all these waiting to be stitched, and I've done several rows for you there. Um, so that's how I stitch diagonal stitch by stitch parking. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I will link Brian Blitz Stitches video below. Um, I may also link um, Ingeborg's A Stitch Too Far, her videos because she stitches one of her projects this way and she stitches in a different direction yet than either Brian or I. So it, depending on which way you stitch, you might find all or, you know, either any of our videos helpful. So there's that. And I hope to see you again soon with either a Stitch With Me video or my next update. Happy stitching!